Hey there, brilliant entrepreneur. What do you think is the number one strategy that I use to make sales in my business? Whether it's selling a group program like the Takeoff program, or it's selling a VIP package to work with me, what do you think gets the most sales for me in my business? Well, you might be surprised to learn that even at this stage of my business, my number one strategy is sales conversations. Sales conversations, talking to people one-on-one, whether that's in writing or on a Zoom call, and making sure that I understand what it is that they're looking for and what they need and what they're struggling with, and helping them to work out what the, the best next step might be for us to work together. And we do that on a sales conversation. Now, hearing that might make you feel a bit ee because as a buyer, you may have experienced one of those pushy sales conversations, or as a seller, you might have felt a bit awkward when doing sales conversations. It's something that a lot of people try and avoid very, very clearly in their business because they don't want to face up to having to hear the rejection one-on-one or they find it really awkward and uncomfortable because they think they need to be pushy or they need to be like switched on and in sales mode. But that's not the case. So in today's episode of the Heart Center Business Podcast, I'm going to walk you through my consent-based sales conversation structure. And the reason why I want to do that is because number one, when you see it all laid out, you'll probably see why it's so effective. Number two, Hopefully, in having that structure, it will help you to feel more comfortable in having sales conversations yourself. But also, number three, in seeing the consent-based approach to sales conversations, I think it makes it really clear the difference between consent-based sales conversations and those pushy, aggressive sales conversations. And so that will also help you as a buyer as well as help you as a seller. Now, I've got some really cool free resources that go with this podcast episode, and I have the structure all laid out step by step um, with the show notes of today's episode. So make sure you come and check those out at tashcorbin.com forward slash 407, because this is episode number 407 of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. Let's dive into this one. It's super practical. I'm Tash Corbin, and this is the Heart Centered Business Podcast. First and foremost, do you find it yucky to do sales conversations? Or maybe you find yourself completely resisting it and coming up with very strategic, very tricky ways to opt out of having to do sales conversations yourself. I know that when I first started my business, I thought the last thing I'd want to do is have one-on-one conversations with people about buying from me. And I thought the best way to make sales would be to make good sales pages because then people just go and read about the product and then they just go and buy it over there. And I don't have to worry about making sure I get my pitch exactly right every time, making sure that I remembered the right phrases and the right ways of talking about it. But very quickly in my business, I discovered the joy of consent-based sales conversations, the joy of having a one-to-one conversation with someone first to really ascertain what it is that they were looking for and what they needed help with, and also the joy of sales conversations being super high conversion. So the thing that really got me excited about learning how to do great sales conversations was that even when I sucked at them, even when I really didn't know what I was doing, about 30% of people that I spoke to about working together ended up purchasing. And so I could see the numbers in plain sight that showed me I wouldn't need as big of an audience if I just used sales conversations. I wouldn't have to pay for Facebook ads and be online all of the time if I used sales conversations because to make three sales of my VIP package, I just needed to have 10 sales conversations. And to have 10 sales conversations, I just needed 10 people. That's it. And so it was just a really powerful opportunity for me to see the numbers, to see the math 
behind the sales and marketing strategies that I had available to choose from. And when it comes to growing your audience, the most expensive and time intensive part of your client attraction process is that early reach and audience growth. And so I could see that if I got really good at sales conversations, and I got really good at encouraging people to jump onto sales conversations with me, I wouldn't need to grow my audience as big. Therefore, I wouldn't have to spend as much time and money growing that audience. Therefore, I wouldn't have to spend so much time doing marketing. I could focus my time on delivery. I could focus on my time on serving my beautiful clients. And so I became a diligent student of sales conversations. So if you've ever been on a sales conversation as a buyer, you've probably experienced feeling pressured, manipulated, or even bullied. And when I say bullied, I mean bullied. I was once told that if I didn't buy something for $25,000 on the call, I wasn't a financially independent, strong woman that if I decided I needed to talk to my partner about that $25,000 investment, then there was something wrong with me. And I found that absolutely appalling and atrocious, and I absolutely did not buy from that person. But it's very common for us to experience that on a sales conversation. But I want to reassure you, sales conversations are my number one strategy but I do them with consent-based marketing practices. Everything that I do is consent-based. Now, rather than explain the theory of sales conversations and the theory of consent-based marketing, which I'm sure you've already heard from me by now, but if not, just search for consent in the podcast at tashcorbin.com forward slash search and you'll find all my stuff. Or even better, come to the show notes at tashcorbin.com forward slash 407 and listen to my podcast episode about what to do when people say they can't afford to work with you. Because when you listen to that podcast episode, you'll realize just the difference that consent-based marketing has and um, how amazing it is. So do that first if you are not sure about consent-based marketing, you're not sure about any of those sorts of things. But rather than explain any more of that theory, what I want to do is give you the exact structure that I use for sales conversations so you can see just how powerful it is and the difference between consent-based sales conversations and those pushy, aggressive, yucky ones you've probably been told to do before or you've been subjected to before. So let's get into that gorgeous structure. So overall, there are seven steps to a sales conversation that's consent-based. Those seven steps are, number one, connect. Number two, qualify. Number three, confirm. Number four, recommend. Number five, ask. Number six, refine. Number seven, close. So I'm going to go through this consent-based sales conversation structure step by step and talk you through exactly what happens at each stage. Now, one thing I will say is this is a sales conversation where someone's jumped on the call specifically to talk to you about a product or service that you offer. There's a different structure that I use where someone is on a marketing call with me or a coaching call with me or something else where we're working on something together and then I'm qualifying into a sales conversation at the end. That's a different structure that I use and I do teach both of these structures inside the takeoff program. But this one gives you the basics of when someone says, oh, I'm interested in buying your package or I'm interested in this program of yours, can we jump on a call to have a chat about it? This is the sales conversation structure that we're going to focus on for today's podcast episode. So let's start with step one, which is connect. Now, I don't know that I need to even say this, but at the start of a sales conversation, it's important that we are human and we connect over um, that humanness And also we're clear on what's going to happen. So in the connect stage of a sales conversation, first of all, I connect in with the human. Hello, how are you? Where are you located in the world? If I don't know, how's your day gone so far? If there's a dog in the room, oh my gosh, that's a dog. I've got a dog too, right? So a little something to connect with the human. 
Now, that puts everyone at ease, but also it reminds you that there's a human on the other end of the line, not just a number, not just a potential client. Potential clients are humans. Now, also importantly in the connect stage of a sales conversation, you just want to make sure you're both on the same page about what the purpose of the call is. So if they've asked to talk to you about working together, then you would say something like, we're here to discuss how I can help you with my package that focus on X, or we're here to discuss how I can help you with XYZ outcome. Now, I always, whenever I say a statement like that, I ask for agreement. I ask, Is, have I got that correct? Is that what you're understanding we're here for? Because if they think that they've come to this call to get free coaching from you, but you think you're on the call to see if they're a good fit to work together for a paid product or service, you want to make sure that you're both on the same page and you've got that clear from the outset. Not have that be like a weird interruption 15 minutes into the call. So just making sure that you're on the same page about the agreed purpose of the call. Now, this also stops that um, sales conversation from turning into an accidental free coaching session, which is also something that can happen if you're not clear at the start of the call by setting that boundary. So an agreed purpose of the call, we're here to discuss XYZ offer, or you want to discuss getting my help with this outcome. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Then the final part of the connect phase is how you're going to do that. Great. So what we're going to do on the call is I'm going to ask you some questions so they get a really clear idea of what it is that you're working on and what you're focused on. And then I'll be able to recommend what I think might be the best way for us to move forward. And if we both feel like it's a good fit, I can let you know how you can get started in doing that with me. How does that sound? Right. So I'm just making this up on the fly at the moment, but something where you're just expressing exactly how you're going to structure the call. So in my sales conversations, I always ask lots of questions at the start. Then, you know, if there's something we can quickly fix on the way, I'll let you know. Um, But the whole point is that we're going to get to the point within the next 15 to 20 minutes where I can let you know what I think is going to be the best fit for you moving forward. How does that sound? So it's just making sure we're on the same page as well. Now, if I'm not sure of how much time that person has available to talk to me, I will double check that at the connect stage of the call as well. So, um, you know, the booking that we set in was for 15 minutes. Do you have to go right on the 15 minutes or if we need to take a little longer, is that okay? Okay. Um, So that just also makes sure that they can see I'm really respecting their time as well. Now, the next stage of the sales conversation is qualify. And this is one of the most important parts of a sales conversation, especially in consent-based marketing. You'll see that through the connect phase, we're asking for that consent to move forward. Are we on the same page? Does that sound about right? How does that sound to you? So you're just able to then gauge how they're feeling about it all and if they've got any questions before you even start. In the qualifying section, this is where we're going to start asking those good quality questions about what it is that they're currently facing, what is it their goals are, what they're looking for help with. Your job is to work out what they want and whether you can help them to achieve it. So asking questions like, what is it that you're wanting to achieve in this area? Why is this important for you? What else have you tried? Why don't you think that worked? Um, What attracted you to working with me in particular? So you can ask those questions to just understand, like, what is it that's going on for them? You could even ask, like, what's right now really annoying you about what's going on? Or it depends on the topic area, of course, but You know, if I could wave a magic wand and fix one thing that's painful for you in this space right now, what would that be? So you'll, as you practice doing sales conversations, learn which qualifying questions really do the best for you in terms of your niche and um, the messaging that you're going to need to focus on when you're then presenting your pitch. But it's really about making sure that you are confident that you know what they want, what they're struggling with and whether or not you can actually help them with that or not. So ask lots and lots of questions. Now, if it's not about a specific offer, so they haven't said, oh, I'm interested in your six-month package. They've instead said, oh, I'm interested in how you might be able to work with me or whether I might be able to work with you or something like that. Then I would also recommend in your qualifying section, asking some questions about 
their delivery preferences. So, you know, did you have an idea of how regularly you wanted to do sessions? Are you looking for that done with you, we do the sessions together kind of support, or were you more looking for someone to do it for you? Um, Are you hoping to get some coaching and mentorship through the process, uh, or are you just looking for someone to tell you what to do? Um, Are you someone who likes to get things done really quickly and you've got time and space in between to implement and get it sorted, or do you need a big long gap in between our sessions so that you've got time and space to implement any changes we discuss? So just really understanding what their operational preferences are, how they would like to work with you, or if they've got a preconceived idea about what's going to be best for them as well. Um, Something that I do offer is I do offer half-day VIPs or full-day VIPs where we just get everything done in one day. So if this person is interested in working with me as a VIP, then that's something that I would ask in that qualifying section. So, you know, I do have a range of ways that I work with people. Are you looking for like, let's just get it all done in one day and we just really, um, you know, narrow it right down and get it all done? Or are you looking for more of a long-term mentorship opportunity? People will have a little idea about that or they'll say, look, I have no idea. I'm really open to whatever you recommend. Either way, whether they give you a clear idea or not, it's really important information. Because if they say, I have no idea, I've never done anything like this before, then you know exactly where they are in their journey because they've never done anything like this before. They've just given you that powerful insight. Now, if they don't quite understand the value proposition of what it is that you do, if they are still playing at the surface, so let's say someone's on a sales conversation with me and they're saying, well, I just really need to know how to get my Facebook working and I need to be able to grow my audience because I'm just not making any sales, then I need to bridge to the light bulb moment for them because yes, getting more followers on social media and getting more reach on social media is great. But the reason why people work with me is because they want to turn those followers into paying clients. And so if this person is coming to me and I can see they've completely misdiagnosed what their problem is, I don't invalidate what they've said. I validate it and bridge it. So I'll say, yes, that's really cool. I love helping people get extra growth on social media. I love helping people with Facebook. It's definitely a platform I'm familiar with. And something that I really specialize in is ensuring that we don't just get you cold followers who engage with your content but never buy from you. We really want to ensure that the people you're getting to engage with your socials are deeply interested in investing and working with you. And you've got the strategies behind that social platform to ensure that a big portion of that audience is moving closer and closer to buying from you and you know how to convert them into paying clients. Does that sound like something you'd want to do with that? So you don't just want to get followers, you also want that to convert into sales. How does that sound? So what I'm doing there is I'm bridging that over the from the what they've misdiagnosed into what I can see is underneath that and we want to get that sorted as well. And I'm also validating the whole way. So it's a really powerful way to create that connection and create that excitement and to demonstrate my expertise in the area simply by clarifying that, yes, absolutely, I can help you with that. And we're also going to make sure that when we do that, it also contributes to the bigger goal that you have of making sales. The next part of the sales conversation is to confirm That confirmation is confirming that you have a shared understanding of the value proposition. So one of the ways you might word that is to say, so just to confirm, if we could achieve X and fix Y, then that would allow you to Z. Does that sound about right to you? So what we're doing there is just making sure we're on the same page about what is important to them and why they want to be able to do it. So it might be, um, what if uh, what I'm hearing from you now is if we could get you to be attracting leads and making sales consistently, you'd feel like that's creating confidence in the long-term sustainability of your business. And in order for you to be able to attract those leads, we agree that what we need to do is fix your messaging. Is that correct? And so what we're doing there with that confirmation statement is just really 
ensuring we're on the same page. We're on the same page. So what I'm hearing with asking all of these questions and with what I've assessed here is that you're in this before state, you want to be in the after state, and here's why that is important to you. So there's lots and lots of um, different ways that you could word that, but it's finding that common ground where you are clear on what it is that you've agreed on. And I would recommend that you don't move forward in a sales conversation until you are on the same page. If they say, oh, well, not really because of this, or yeah, that's sort of it, but you're not getting an enthusiastic yes, then I would certainly continue to uh, qualify until you've got that confirmation and you're both really clear and in agreement. Then the next step of the sales conversation is to make your recommendation. Remember, you are the expert. So you want to recommend what you think is the best path for them to achieve the goal based on their situation and what you've just agreed on in the confirmation statement. So you might recommend a number of sessions or how often you're going to be meeting. Tell them a little bit about the basics of your process. So in those seven sessions, what we will cover is this and this and this. Um, and the investment for that would be and give them an amount. So the key things that I share in my recommend part of my sales conversation, are what is the product or service that I recommend? What are some of the basics around that? So number of sessions and how often I'd recommend that we meet. What is the basic process that we're going to cover some of those key milestones and what is the investment? What is the price for that? Now, st- the next step in the sales conversation is to ask a question. And that question is, how does that sound? Once you've asked that question, be quiet. In our takeoff um, module that I do a sales conversation structure in, I just have a slide that says, and now shush. <laughs> So um, as you have, as soon as you've shared the investment, the first thing you should do as soon as you've said, okay, and the investment for that is $1,800, how does that sound? That's it. Shh, then shush. So um, provide the details and your recommendation. The last thing you provide in your recommendation is how much it's going to cost. And then you ask the question, how does that sound? And you're quiet. From there, if they have questions, answer their questions and then re-ask. So how does that sound? Um, If there's an adjustment that you need to make and they say, oh, I'd rather meet every two weeks, not every week. So then, yep, we can absolutely do that. Here's how that would work. Um, And that would be the same investment. How does that sound? So whatever the uh, adjustment is that you need to make, make that adjustment and do that re-ask. If they need to think about it first, then generally I will say, yep, no worries at all. And we'll agree on when I'll follow up with them. So I'm taking responsibility for following up. And then we move to the close section of the sales conversation. So I've got close covered shortly. So we just move to that next bit. If they can't afford it, acknowledge them for Um, looking after their finances and close. Now, as I said at the start of this episode, I do have a podcast specifically on that. So I'll link to that with the show notes of today's episode at tashcorbin.com forward slash 407. If they say no, ask them why and then thank them for their insight and then close. So there's no um, problem with saying no worries at all. Um, May I just, for my own understanding, just get a little bit more information about why you don't think it's the right fit for you right now. Generally, people will volunteer that information anyway, but it's nice to find your words of just getting that little extra clarification. And if it's a yes, share your excitement and then move to the close. So in the close, if it's a yes, you're taking their payment on the call or sending them through a link or invoice to make that payment immediately and explain the next steps to them. So once the payment comes through, I'll send you a link to book your first session or um, I've got the payment that's come through now. So here's the, let's get the next session booked in and I'll send you some pre-session information. Whatever it is that you're doing, just let them know what happens next. If they need to think about it, as I said, set an agreed time in which you will follow up with them. Um, be clear on how you'll follow up with them. And also what I do is I say, in, in the meantime, if you decide, yep, it's definitely a full yes for you and you want to jump in and get started, just let me know. Um, if it's a no, but not ev- never, so it might be no, 
I need to do something else first or no, but I can see how I'll need that in the future, then make sure that you ask about touching base with them again in that time. So it might be no worries at all. Yeah, that sounds like a really good plan. How about I check in with you in a couple of months time to see how everything's going, if that's still something you're looking for. So you're just getting that agreement on the follow-up process. If it's never, they say, no, this is not what I'm looking for. That's not the kind of thing that I would do. Then thank them for their time. If it feels like there's not a problem with you, it's just a problem with the service, it's not something that they would use, um, then letting them know to refer people your way, feel free to send people way, your way who that might be a fit for. Um, and then for all of them, regardless of whether it's a yes or I need to think about it or it's a not now or it's a never, make sure that you've got clearly you understand um what their best email address is for you to do that follow-up if there is some follow-up to be done. Um, check and see if they're on your mailing list perhaps. Um, are they following you on social? So even if it's a no or it's a I need to think about it, you can also just have a little quick check to see that they're still going to get your content because that is going to help to continue nurturing that relationship with them as well. And that is the structure of the sales conversation. So you can see it's a really simple and straightforward thing. Notice how nowhere in there have I told you you need to force people into something, you need to pressure anyone. If they tell you they can't afford it, there's no, uh, what does it cost you not to invest? Blech, that's gross. We don't do that stuff. So it's very consent-based and it's a really beautiful sales conversation structure. So just a quick recap, we connect then qualify, asking those questions, confirm we're on the same page, make a recommendation, ask how does that sound and then be quiet, refine if necessary, and then go to the close. So seven steps and it's going to get you really effective, really consent-based sales conversations. Make sure you come and check those show notes at tashcorbin.com forward slash 407 because as I said, I've got a link to my what do you do if people say they can't afford to work with you podcast episode, but also my core messaging freebie. That's going to help you to ensure that in that confirmation statement where we um, are confirming that you're on the same page and understanding the value proposition, you then can take that information and put it into your value proposition part of your messaging. The part where I talked about bridging, that's also in that core messaging freebie. So if messaging, bridge messaging, value proposition are things that you struggle with, make sure that you go and grab that one. I'll pop the link with the show notes of today's episode at tashcorbin.com forward slash 407. Until next time, I cannot wait to see you shine and I look forward to seeing you at the next episode of the Heart Center Business Podcast. Bye for now. Would you like more tips, tools and resources to help you grow your heart-centered business? Head to tashcorbin.com today.